you want a better sex life, if you want a healthier relationship, if you want to increase your libido, increase your self-esteem, increase your confidence, if you want to be able to avoid possible sexual dysfunction in the future, quit porn. Welcome back to e Rodic the brand. Hi, my name is Eden Lee Middleman. I am your favorite dating and sex coach here. And today we're going to be discussing a topic that I have been teasing, hinting at. I've been dropping little golden nuggets throughout my episodes about the negative effects of porn. Lottie fucking da. Most guys roll their eyes when I talk about it. Most guys are like, well, it's normal. Most girls will deny that they watch it, but I actually do. I mean, there's a lot to unpack here. And I'm going to support my argument with plenty of research. I mean, this is the leading research. Almost every study that's ever been done has highlighted some sort of physiological, emotional, social, psychological effects to the human who is consuming porn. And as a society, with about 90% of men consuming porn and about 60% of women consuming porn, we can go ahead and blame the common denominator here to how our dating lives are unfolding in front of us I love when people complain to me about casual dating why is everyone casual dating why don't I trust people why is every guy hunting for sex only and then shits on women for being too promiscuous but then like searching for that why are all these girls posting half naked photos on Instagram I want you to ask yourself what do you think porn has everything to do with this porn is what makes the world go round nowadays my friends and I am not encouraging that I don't stand for it I don't support it and I don't believe that it is necessary for leading a healthy happy life if anything if you want a healthy happy life that is fulfilling if you want your relationships to be at the ultimate best that they possibly can reach if you want optimal health in all areas of your life beyond just the sexual realm you would quit porn easier said than done because why it's an addiction to me if a habit is hard to quit you are on the addiction path how do we get addicted to drugs how do we get addicted to things we build a habit around it most substances have chemicals that will naturally have our body craving for more because we're in depletion when we are getting off of a drug for example for those that have studied science or know anything about what addiction really looks like it has to do with your body chemically being either overly aroused or depleted and when when we are in the depletion stage we crave more of the drug there are you know for example cigarettes that have nicotine that are known to be addictive in and of itself right but similar to cigarettes and porn is that cigarettes actually create a habit that is harder to break than the actual nicotine that is addictive and most people will notice that they just crave the little breaks that they take in the day that smoking used to allow them to do or the oral fixation of holding a cigarette while driving or the oral fixation of wanting something when you have a little buzz when you're drinking these are habit building things right when you build these habits it's hard to quit a lot of you guys are out here saying weed is not addictive and I laugh in your fucking faces because I want to see you stop I want to see you stop but you can't oh I don't want to no it's because you can't because when you don't you're not happy you're irritable you feel uncomfortable being with your thoughts you kind of have this like weird weed hangover when you try and quit you've got withdrawal symptoms withdrawal symptoms from what something that's not addictive so you're telling me you're not addicted when we don't adhere to the habits that we've created we crave them so if you start to go to the gym every single day for a month after that you're gonna want to go you're gonna crave going to the gym it's the same thing so whether or not porn is a, you know, by definition, a, an addiction, I believe it ticks off all the boxes. Psychologists are the ones that have, you know, certain criteria and requirements to classify it as an addiction. And then they have to study it and then they have to find ways to actually rehabilitate people who have a porn addiction. And the problem with that is it's still not very clear because it is so normalized, because most people lie about their porn usage, because they don't actually think that they are addicted or have built a habit around it in all of my episodes in the past I talk about how masturbation is so important how everyone should masturbate with your partner without your partner all of those things and oftentimes when I say masturbating what's the first thing you think of you think of porn but masturbation and porn contrary to popular belief has nothing to do with one or the other porn is something that you have attached onto the act of masturbation masturbation is healthy while porn is not and that is why a lot of people actually vouch that porn is healthy because you are masturbating and that's good for you but that element does not need to be present for you to actually masturbate it needs to be present for you to masturbate when you are addicted to it and cannot masturbate in any other way shape or form meaning that you are actually not sexually in tune with yourself 
you are actually feeding your brain things that are going to alter its brain functions in the long term, both in your relationships, in your sex drive, in your satisfaction with sex, and in regards to all areas of your life, whether that be focus, mood, depression, anxiety, it has all been linked to porn. It's bad for you. It's bad for your partner. It's bad for your friends. It's bad for the society that we live in. As we see, if you are unhappy with the casual, you know, way of dating, the promiscuity that is just increasing and being heightened in society, you want to look around and ask yourself, what is the common denominator between these people? How come right now it's so okay? Because porn is so okay. Because when you tell your partner, I don't feel really feel comfortable with you watching porn. They say, well, everyone does it. They say, well, it's not cheating. Well, it's not a big deal. Oh, so you looking at naked people, doing all kinds of things, choosing whichever woman you want to look at, whichever man you want to look at, doing whatever is okay in a monogamous relationship. Back in the day when there was no access to porn in such a readily available way, you know, the billions of videos that you have to look through and the fact that half of you guys sit there just scrolling through them till you find the right point, the right video, the right this, the right that, goes to show that you have already changed your brain function when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to satisfaction, when it comes to what arouses you, when it comes to all of those physiological effects that have now changed your behavior when it comes to arousal and being a sexual being, right? Now you look at that and you say it's normal. Now the intense video that you thought last month was a little bit aggressive is no longer as aggressive. So you're looking for something more aggressive. Do you see that this is what happens with the trajectory of, you know, this sexual climb that I speak about in a lot of my episodes? There is no cap. There is no limit because there is endless possibility, which is what excites people, right? We, we are greedy beings. So when we go on Instagram, we see there's endless access to women and men we think that the grass is always greener you know this girl is no longer as hot as this one and there's always something hotter and this and that and then eventually you look at the average woman who doesn't have her tits ass face done as not attractive to you because you've just changed the entire reality in your brain and this is exactly what porn does as well i'm not just talking to men i'm talking to women women have been guilty of also saying that they're not satisfied in the bed because they think that their man is too vanilla where did you get that concept from you got it from porn right the narratives that you learned most of it is from porn that does not mean that porn is educational. That means that porn is actually fitting you into a box of some extreme toxic sexual behaviors without exploring the negative effects that they can have on you in the long term. And you're practicing them in the bedroom with no contacts, with no education. And you think that this is what is expected of you. And then the other side, you know, the other sex that you're having sex with is okay with it too because this is what's been normalized on porn so now choking hitting using all kinds of aggressive behaviors is considered normalized and me being a girl who is into more physical types of sex with only the partners that I trust so with my partner with my long-term relationship you know there are boundaries but this is explored through communication rather than porn that does not mean that you can't have wild fun sex I think that that is where you guys are not critical thinkers. I think this is where you guys totally miss the point all the fucking time. Sex is supposed to look like this, be like this. Women are supposed to look like this, be like this, so that when you go into bed and you actually have good adequate sex, you'll never be satisfied because you've already watched all of this crazy shit that has been normalized, right? When you're alone, you need something that's crazy in front of you because you're not actually with somebody. So you don't have that element of intimacy. So you need to, you know, crank up the wildness or the tabooness to turn you on. And the more you do it, the more you're going to need that. And the less satisfied you'll be in real life scenarios because real life scenarios is not porn and porn is not real life. So this is where the crazy vortex of why porn is bad and quite complicated starts and comes from. I'm going to get into specific points that have been proven by different studies across the board for many years and I think more men and women now but specifically men I think have a more powerful voice when it comes to porn usage because it has been normalized with men men send each other all kinds of videos gifs gifs whatever the fuck nudes from other girls I mean it's just so normalized and so encouraged it's almost like a bro thing and this has to stop right in order for porn to not be abused as badly as it is. Whether or not that'll ever happen doesn't matter. If you don't want that in your life, you have every right to decide that you don't want that for yourself, that you don't want that for your partner. And if your partner doesn't want to agree with you on that, then you guys are obviously not aligned in those same morals and values. I was never okay with my with my partners watching porn. And when I tell people that, they say, well, what do you think he doesn't? Whether he does or doesn't, that's on him, but I can tell. The funny thing is, is what guys don't realize is girls can tell a lot of the times who is very into porn in the bedroom and who is not. 
I can tell right away. It becomes a show. It becomes a little bit too much. It becomes so inorganic in the bedroom and they might think that they're doing a good job or they might think that like they're doing what they're into or what they watch and they want to recreate it. You can tell it doesn't match that person. It doesn't make sense. You feel that. And then there's a disconnect in the bedroom. Same thing with girls who fake moan, who fake do all this shit that they don't really want to do, who try and go crazy and do all of these weird things just to impress the guy. We know you got that from porn, period. You know, there is a certain element of intimacy that slows down the sexual experience that makes it real life that allows you to connect to one another. Even if you're not into the whole romantic lovey dovey type of sex, that doesn't mean that there's there should be no intimacy there, of course, is. And that is when sex goes from good to great. And that is the element that you guys are lacking that you can't be in tune with if you've already eaten up all of this porn all day and all night. Because like I said, your brain is now used to a different type of reality, has a fixated dream guy or dream girl, has scenarios played out in their head and they're trying to replicate that in, you know, real time. And usually what happens is they're disappointed. So they much rather go back, lock themselves in the washroom, open up their laptop, grab their lube and, and you know, hit the town. So what you do is because you're dissatisfied, you go and seek for more of something that you felt at the time satisfied you. You don't have to worry about somebody else judging you because you've got porn and you're in the privacy of you and your fucking computer and your chat cam girls. When in reality, you're just enforcing the habit, a.k.a. the addiction of porn. So besides porn having physiological effects, you know, which include like risky sexual behaviors, you know, our trajectory of sex. I've experienced this firsthand. It gets dangerous with somebody who watches porn or is into like this very specific kink. You know, the only place they feel kind of comfortable is porn websites because porn websites, they explore all kinds of really weird shit that like day to day wouldn't be applauded or people wouldn't be interested in or you'd be scared to bring it up because you feel like it's not accepted. A lot of things that are on porn websites that are taboo or taboo for a reason. There are a lot of reasons why, you know, most people don't like to talk about specific kinks because they have an underlying dangerous connotation. There is reasons for limitations in life, my friends. And if you find a sexual partner that you trust and that can trust you and vice versa, that's where you can explore more things. But put the porn aside. Right. Because you have to look at this person as a human being so that you don't risk yourself trickling into to risky sexual behaviors that can end up in danger for both you and the other person. Right. Or legal problems. You know, and this is why people resort to porn again, because, well, if I can't have that in real life, then I'm going to have it in this imaginary world. Right. I can take out all of this terrible taboo thing, which I wouldn't dare bring up to my partner because I respect her too much. So I watch this disgusting shit here. You didn't find a loophole here. You're still breeding these types of urges and behaviors. And one day they'll catch up to you. Many people who have been watching porn daily and who have gone into that tr terrible trajectory, that never ending climb of like, OK, well, this no longer does it for me. So now I have to go more intense, more intense, more intense, more intense. To the point where you're watching shit that would incriminate you if someone found in your fucking search history. So you're developing urges and impulses. And you know, a lot of it is rape culture. A and I know people don't like when I say stuff like that that might sound so big. But take it in for a second. Take it in for a second. If half that shit you wouldn't be comfortable speaking about, doing with other people, doing it with the love of your life, having your mom know that you're into that shit, there is, must be something wrong. And a lot of people say dicks up, brains off. If that's the case, you have no self-control and you need to be behind bars. Porn allows you to explore things that should not be explored. There are limits. You know, there's a saying, enjoy to the limits. Because here's the thing, when you enjoy to the limits, you really enjoy the party. But when you go over the limits, you regret that you stayed, you know, that extra hour when the party dies down and everybody's fucking not doing so hot. There's a limit. Sometimes things have to be capped. Sometimes modesty is the best policy. And I'm not coming from, by the way, a religious place. I'm not coming from any type of narrative. I talk about anal sex online. I talk about all kinds of things in detail. I'm a very sexually versed, sexually open person. And, you know, I like doing and experimenting with things because I'm in tune with my body and with my partner and there's trust. We're able to do those things. But we still know that there are some things that should not be done or explored out of respect to one another. If you need to search to get those impulses taken care of, you have no self-control. It's human for us to think of sometimes some whack stuff. But if we don't feel like it's driving us and it's not an urge that we need to take care of and we're able to be like, I'm aware that that's just a fucking funky thought up in my head. OK, it's not something I want to do to my partner. It's not something that I think is, you know, all right by any means. And that's it. End of thought, end of story, end of fantasy, done.
People who watch porn are more likely, according to several studies, are more likely to actually not be able to control those impulses and act upon them. So this is where we breed a culture and society where, you know, casual dating and casual fucking within the first five minutes of, you know, meeting one another is totally acceptable, right? Girls feel the pressure to do this because other girls are doing it. And if they don't do it, they're not going to be as cool, as hot or as sexually, you know, inclined or experienced because the girls in porn do all of these crazy things. The girls in porn look a certain way. The guys in porn do all these things to the woman. And there's a lot of pressure. They all look very, you know, a, a very specific way. They're always embellished. The tits are bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where they don't even look like human. The asses are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where they don't even look like human. So that a human body is no longer attractive. And then you, again, you reach for porn. So porn, the porn industry is meant to keep you hooked, addicted and create those habits. They know exactly, you know, who their audience is. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. It is not going away, but it is up to you to decide whether you want to be a part of that world. Now, keep in mind that as consumers, we have more power than any company in the world. There's a lot of emotional effects that have to do with porn. A lot of people use porn when they're bored. What do you do? You get home, you watch some TV, you eat something, and then what else are you going to do? You're bored. You can't spend time with yourself because you're lonely. Maybe you're anxious. Maybe this is a great way of blowing off steam, um, whatever the case may be. So you go and you watch porn. Again, this is an escapist like mentality. This is, again, us avoiding our problems, not working on ourselves, and reverting to shit that's not good for us that just gives us the dopamine hit that we need that's why we go and party when we are lonely and sad or that's why we go and reach out to people on social media hoping for a dopamine hit with a response or a plan you know to help validate us that wow we are wanted wow you know we can get our needs met by doing other things instead of looking internally and working on ourselves that might not be as you know, quick and won't give us that instant gratification that we're looking for. Porn does all of that. Porn releases dopamine, which is the exact same brain chemical that is released when we're doing drugs. And the problem is you start it very young and you do it at the, your most formative years. I've heard that people have been watching porn since they were fucking seven years old. My God, what it is doing to the brains of these young, poor, malleable kids. So watch your fucking kids. Close the fucking computers. Lock that shit. Parental control. I don't give a shit what you have to do. Don't get them a fucking phone. Like, be a responsible parent for your kid because they'll fucking thank you in the future. They might hate you in the meantime. Let them fucking hate you. But they will thank you in the goddamn future. This habit is starting so very young. They're learning everything that they think they need to know about sex on something that is not reliable like porn with a fake reality, fake scenario, fake narrative, la -di fucking da And then what happens is by the time they are in their teens or young adulthood, they are desensitized to so many things that you'd expect to arouse them. They are desensitized to abusive sexual behavior because they don't even look at it as abusive. The more porn you watch, the more tolerance you have to it, right? The more you drink, the more tolerance you're building. The more you smoke weed, the more tolerance you're building. And therefore you need more of it to suffice that dopamine release you want that boredom fix that you crave you know um you're really pent up so you look for the right video you spend more time looking for the right m minute to watch than actually watching porn you waste hours in your day doing something that is never going to benefit you that is harming you each and every time you do it you are going to constantly need more that is why real sex will never do it after a while Desensitization is directly correlated with sexual dysfunctions. Porn is not good for your relationship. Contrary to popular belief, I know that there are a lot of happy couples out there who don't mind if their partner watches porn. They watch porn together, all these fucking things. Um, in my opinion, I think porn is something that is not necessary. There's always comparison to the other person. Whether we are a great person or not, there will always be natural comparison. That is the name of the game. That is how human beings work. I think relationships are better off exploring sexually, communicating, and building the essential skills that will take them further into the future throughout different parts of the relationship and different parts of life. You know, practice that even in the most vulnerable and intimate moments, which is in the bedroom. So instead of, you know, just watching something and recreating it or watching something to get off, Try and figure out a way to creatively do that with your partner and involve your partner. That will elevate that sexual spark that you guys always seem to diminish after the first few months of dating because you feel like you've been there, done it all because of porn. Porn consumption was actually the second strongest indicator that, that a relationship would suffer. This was done by a study and this will continue to be the main reason why relationships suffer. In my opinion, it'll only get worse. People out here saying, you know, divorce rates and this and that and whatever. Bottom line, let's look at why it's so high nowadays. We say, oh, social media. People are easily accessible. 
Let's dig deeper than that, my friends. Where did this sexualization, objectification, which has always been there, I know, but this heightened objectification of women about women needing to show their body, making money off of their body, only fans, Instagram. Where did that come from? Porn. In university, just so you guys know, I studied a, you know, marketing class or two here and there out of curiosity. And one of my marketing teachers said that there is only three things that you need to sell anything. Number one is sex. Number two is babies. Number three is animals. It prides on people's emotions and insecurities the most. That is marketing 101. It's porn, sex, heightens our insecurities so much, but also feeds us, you know, this false imagination. The beauty industry does the same. Oh, you know, you want bigger lips? Here's a lip liner or a lip gloss that's going to plump your lips. You're insecure about your lips? Here's a product that will solve it. Porn. You're, you don't feel like you're getting sex. You don't feel like you can get beautiful women. You want to do these crazy things? Well, here is a solution. This solution is actually the most damaging thing you can do because you're not actually getting to the root cause of anything. Your insecurity to your lips, you're not getting to the root cause of your self-esteem issues or your body image issues, right? You're just numbing it by adding something to the plate and saying that's going to fix it in the meantime until you need lip injections, right? Which again, I'm not shaming anybody about that. I'm just giving you a very real life example when it comes to that stuff. This is the escalation of how it goes and that does not omit porn. Another reason why porn is not good for your relationship is because of what is known as the affection exchange theory. There is such thing as affectionate expression and affectionate emotion. Affectionate expression looks like sex. Affectionate emotion has an emotional element to it. We have now completely cut off affectionate emotion and we've separated affectionate emotion from affectionate expression because you're not uh, emotional about the porn that you watch. You are focusing on the physical on the visual stimuli and your brain turns off for a bit. You're in la la land. Tell me why the minute you're done and you come and you release that you immediately shut that shit off so quick and you're so disgusted by what you just watched. The shame and guilt that happens, that post not clarity that everyone talks about is not something to omit or just consider as completely normal. If you are shameful or feeling guilty post sex, after you've come to your senses, literally and figuratively, there's something terribly wrong whether that is you in in connection to being sexual, whether that is what you just watched, whether that is, you know, the partner that you just slept with. Now, because we are limiting affectionate emotion and just affectionate expression, we are now numbing ourselves to that. In our relationships, after we've watched porn and we train ourselves to do this daily or all the time, we now go into sex and look at it as just a physical thing. Visual aid, what are they going to do? What am I going to see that's going to stimulate me? Am I going to get off? and call it a day. This is where relationships break. This is why there is no spark anymore because you are no longer working on the intimacy of it all, the affection, emotional aspect of it. You're focusing on just the affectionate physical. Sex has layers to it and sometimes it's okay to just do it and be physical. But especially when you're in a relationship, there has to be an affectionate, emotional aspect and element to it. And when you don't have that anymore, the partners no longer are yearning for each other. They, they no longer have that desire for one another. When you don't pour into certain elements in your relationship, they'll eventually run out. There was uh, a report done that straight men who watch porn have actually reported less sexual desire, right? both from their partner and in general. They start to lean for to porn or like their private masturbation sessions, you know, accompanied by porn as their preferred way of being sexual. They no longer crave it from their partner because there's so many things, so many girls all at once that you can watch rather than having, you know, sex with one partner where you have to think about respect. You're used to having like three tabs open and watching all three videos at the same time and now you just have this one visual aspect with you and your partner, right? Because again, you've desensitized yourself. Another element of it ruining your relationship is that you're basically cheating. People think that this is a loophole. Okay, I don't want to hear you guys say, no, I don't think porn is cheating. Don't think it. Don't think it. Keep watching porn. Do you, boo? It doesn't affect my life. It affects your life. I don't give a shit. Like, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? But it is cheating. Okay? What is monogamy? What is being in a committed relationship? Is you not, essentially, not looking at other women in terms of them in a sexual light. You know, you're only having sex with one partner. You're dating one partner. You're investing in them both emotionally, sexually, physically, financially, whatever the case may be. Should you be looking at other girls naked, other guys naked? No. Should you be watching other people fuck? No. It's like you being in the room of a party and this girl says, just watch me masturbate. You're not fucking me. Would you consider that cheating? Absolutely. Texting, sexting, chat girls online. Just because that's their job doesn't mean that 
it omits you from the act that you're doing. So when it comes to that, you're you're really erring on tricky waters because even if your partner's okay with the porn now, down their line, they might not. Or they might see a change in behavior and they might suspect things going on further than the porn. Although porn is far enough, in my opinion. And I want to be, you know, the voice for some people who don't feel comfortable bringing that up because I have brought it up to a few of my, you know, friends, family, and even clients saying, have you ever considered that as a form of cheating? Just to see their perspective. Everyone's entitled to have their opinion. Um, I know my, my opinions on it and I know my non-negotiables when it comes to that. So most people are like, what are you talking about? Like, come on, it's just porn. Come on. But nobody has a valid argument. Nobody can actually come up with a valid argument. So if you feel alone and if you feel like all of your friends are disagreeing with you, it's okay. Let them, right? They're a part of the problem, you know, and you don't have to tell them that. You can tell them I said it. I don't give a fuck. You're a part of the problem. You're a part of the 90% men, 60% women who are consuming porn on the fucking daily. It is a form of cheating. It is a form of disrespect. It is a form of self-harm for yourself, harm for others. You are opening up a very dangerous playing fields here in this imaginary world of yours between you and your computer. Now I've had plenty of men. I'm going to read you some testimonials both from me and from others just on the online community who have spoken about coming out of their porn addiction. I'm going to speak about men more so because they have been more affected by this naturally. Um, women, you know, don't abuse porn as much. The vast majority are men and the videos are oftentimes tailored to men. It is a man's world. Say what you want, say what you will. The reason why most people don't stop is because they find it very challenging. And again, it's the same reason why people don't work on themselves, don't get to the root of the problems because it's a lot of work. So breaking a habit, a habit that was formed without no education about that, it, while it's ruining all kinds of areas of your life and you don't even realize it and you think you're just agitated, but really it's the porn addiction, the urge to get this dopamine, this certain level of dopamine now because you're so used to this and it no longer does it for you and you think about it all day or when you're stressed, you think about it and you go there and if you don't get it, you start to get mad. You don't realize this is, this is happening because it's not as crystal clear in your head because you don't even know what you're doing when you're watching porn you don't even want to think about it you want to escape okay I love psychology I love all these theories I'm going to dumb everything down for you and I'm not going to go into great depths about it if you want to do your research go ahead and do so I highly recommend you know knowing just these very basic theories you probably learn them you know psychology 101 classes but reward and conditioning theory is actually linked to addiction as we know so they receive some sort of reward from watching porn and then they want to watch more of it and because it doesn't do the same job as it once did, they have to continue doing that. So that's how they naturally condition themselves based off of the reward that they receive from watching porn. As we know, porn glorifies violence and abuse, okay? Rough sex, this and that. A lot of times we actually can't tell if these vi videos were actually done consensually. There is no proof. It is very hard. And there have been many porn actors and actresses and whatever you want to call them that came out and said that, you know, there were certain things they didn't sign up for, um, blah, 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 blah. You are, by being a consumer, actually endorsing this industry. Watching, engaging with content, paying for something, you are endorsing this company. You are essentially saying, give me more of it. Whether you like the content or not, if you are consuming it, you are a consumer of that content and you are aiding in the company and their greater goal. And if that has to do with, you know, sex trafficking, abusive behavior, violence, unconsensual videos and stuff being posted on there, you are a part of it now. And I don't think people understand that. And you know what? Maybe they do. I, I honestly don't think we're that dumb. I just think that we, we rather not know. Porn consumers are more likely to sexually objectify people, dehumanize people, dehumanize the concept of sex, relationships, more likely to express an intent to rape. And you don't think so because you think I would never do such a thing. And I'm not saying that you would. And I'm not saying that porn leads to that necessarily. But when you're watching it at a young age and let's say you are not being able to achieve what you are looking at or what you dream to be. And these impulses and urges become stronger because you're so desensitized that now you're at a lack for sexual satisfaction. These impulses become harder to control because you yourself can't control when you're when you're, you know, craving to go on porn. You go. You can't control that urge. So what, what makes you think that down the line with other situations that you'll be able to control yourself? You know, most people who watch porn, all that stuff are most likely to, and this was very interesting that I read, was most likely to forward sex to other people. Um, you know, sexual content that maybe you and this other girl were, you know, were sending to each other, more likely to send that to their friends unconsensually. This unconsensual behavior that, you know, 
especially in these guy chats, group chats, communities that are so readily acceptable, the very same guys that think porn is totally normal and totally okay and is not damaging at all. Dumb, 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 dumb. Also, when it comes to relationships, it alters your expectations in the bedroom, which is a very big thing. This actually lowers your self-esteem. People think that watching porn is a great educational way of learning what to do in the bedroom. Unfortunately, it is not because it's not realistic. So a lot of times when you get into the bedroom and your partner isn't performing the way you saw that girl perform on the on the you know whatever the fuck video you saw you think either she's not into you or she's not sexually inclined and i'm no, no longer attracted to her because you've made it so much more important than anything else right if she doesn't have massive tits or a massive ass then she's not you know she's not hot to you why what made tits and ass hot tits are what feeds the kids ass is where you fucking what you sit on when you shit period so the sexualization comes from porn. The sexualization comes from many years of objectifying a woman's body. It's become next level to the point where now all of our decisions with our partners, you know, sex, romance, um, casually dating, it has to fit this mold of what you see online. Girls have the same thing. If he's not hot, if he can't fuck me like, you know, an animal like that guy did or if he doesn't have a dick this big or whatever the case may be we don't want it and that where did that come from that came from porn as well you know what do you know what a six inch dick looks like you don't know what a six inch dick looks like you think you do you see these massive fake dicks that are 12 inches and you think that that's medium sized because that's all you see on porn so that when you see a real life guy's penis you say wow that's so small but that's in reality the six inches you've been talking about you dumb bitch so th this is my whole thing you guys hate women for talking shit about that stuff, but it's the very same thing that you're consuming that's making them think this way. So make it make sense. You know, pick a battle here. Like, honestly, pick a fucking battle. There is this really interesting thought, too, that pornography functions as sort of the cultural script, and it does. What is in sexually? What are people tweeting about? What are people saying is in? Nah, 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 nah. It's what's trending on porn. Movies. And I actually lost my fucking mind the other day, like fuck man i can't watch a single goddamn movie without a titty popping out a penis dangling and ass out i'm not interested in seeing porn on tv i'm not interested in that i'm out with my partner i'm with my mom i'm at a movie theater i want to watch a movie and you need to show me a sex scene that was not even pivotal to the fucking plot it wasn't even pivotal it wasn't necessary it would have been better if you didn't have it in there right but the reason why it's done is because this is what sells this is what you guys look for. This is what they want to kind of get you really into the movie. And that's how they do it. Because your brain is just always going to jump to sex. Because we've been conditioned that way. Period. You know? Yes, it's a human. It's, it's a natural human thing. Sex is great. But to watch people have sex should not be something that we can just do. Right? It's not good that we're comfortable being able to just sit there and watch those things. That's something that we learned from porn right sex used to be a private thing between two people to be involved as a third person in the movie theater watching this with a full-on titty out when you have your girlfriend sitting right beside you is inappropriate and puts people in a bad situation right aren't you threatening somebody's monogamous relationship maybe that's not okay for them but the thing is is it's so normalized that it is okay that they don't even think that way that it doesn't matter because no one's going to complain and create an uproar about it so this cultural script bleeds into everything your social media hoes, your uh, casual dating, your uh, no need for commitment, your wishy-washiness, emotional distance, not being able to connect, no romance, no intimacy, just the physical act. That's all porn's doing. So if you're mad, like I said, I'm not going to say this. If you're mad, I want to see your browse history. Before you talk, I want to see your browse history, bitch. If your browse history was to leak, would you get fired from your job? Hands down. That's all. That's all I got to say. Another interesting thing. You guys think that porn is like this. Oh, wow. I'm becoming sexually versed and I'm this and I'm that. Right. I'm the most sexually versed person I fucking think I know. OK, but that is not because of porn. I learned everything I learned from communicating with my partners, from communicating with me, my sexual desires, being in tune with that, masturbating without porn, using my imagination. Your imagination will actually take you to where your sexual desires really lie. Right. Because I haven't watched porn in years, you know, and I watched before, but like out of curiosity as to what it was. And I immediately was very uncomfortable. And I thought something was wrong with me, to be honest. Right. Like I thought something was fucking wrong with me. As you guys know, I'm a very sexual person, so I don't watch porn and I can be a sexual person. I can please my partners without watching porn. Hmm? 
I don't have to act like a porn actress. That's why, you know, and I joke around, but like, that's why when I have sex with people, it's original content. It's original fucking shit, baby. It's not what I watched. It's me being in tune with myself and there's nothing hotter than that. Right. Most people are following again, like that script, a scene, guy and girl. And you can tell people who don't watch porn can tell people who do watch porn. You feel it. And it's not hot. When you're in tune with yourself and you use your creativity, your mind will actually take you to your to your actual desires. Now, right now, if you've been watching porn, you won't actually know what your true desires are versus what you've been watching. What you've been fed is hot. You won't know. You're actually going to be a very lost little puppy for a while. You got to cleanse yourself from that. Right. And then eventually ease back into using your brain and connecting with your body. And then you'll actually have the best sex of your life and you'll be very in tune, very fulfilled, very happy, mentally clear and aware of what you're doing. And you're going to be present in your experience. When you are present during sex, you actually reach the best peaks of orgasm, the best peaks of intimacy, all of that stuff. You reap greater benefits that way than if you are not present. You're just doing it for the physicality of it all because your brain is known to shut off when you are doing anything sexual. Example, porn. Example, then sex. Porn leads to less sex, less satisfying sex, and like I said, sexual dysfunction. And if you want me to go into detail and scare the living fuck out of you to tell you what sexual dysfunction really looks like, it's... Unable to get aroused. Difficulties with sexual performance. You know, how many guys are having difficulties keeping their dick up? I said what I said. said. Nowadays, what you're consuming. Both food and what you're watching. I worked with a guy, uh, and I'm not going to go into too too much detail, but I worked with somebody, and I've just brought up that he may or may not want to consider getting rid of porn. You know, I coached him. It, was, it wasn't really about porn so much, but I brought that up. I said it in passing, and he really took it seriously and said, fuck, you know, I do do it often. I'm kind of grossed out by it. My partner, I know, doesn't really like it. He stopped, and he said he sent me an email. He is a big, strong, tough man, okay, in, in a very demanding position. And he said that his whole world changed, that he's less irritable, that he is happier, that his sex life has never been better, that his connection with his partner has never been better. And he said it was so hard to stop. But once I did, I don't even want to go back to it because my life back then is no comparison to where it's at now. And he goes, I can't believe it was just porn that was fucking me up like that. Like something so insignificant that I thought throughout the day that I was just doing because every guy does it. It's not a big deal. Could change my entire world in front of me. The way I think, the way I feel, how I perform at work, how I show up as a partner. You think the girlfriend didn't email me and say thank you for saving me? You know, the biggest lie that the porn industry sells you is this sort of sex positivity and openness and there's, you know, inclusivity and all this fucking next level bullshit. But all it does is it warps your sexual expectations in unhealthy ways and affects you down the line. You don't believe it? Go ahead and stop and then come back to it and see the big difference. And a few commonly reported problems are erectile dysfunction, delayed ejaculation, not being able to orgasm, and just entirely lack of sexual desire from porn. So say what you want. You think you're educating yourself, but you're just fucking yourself up in in the ways that you really need to show up in you know what I mean when it comes to sex so for women there's a little bit less evidence when it comes to sexual dysfunction they're more so affected by the mental part of it all and body image there's more anxiety and distress when it comes to that you know they don't really feel super comfortable they start comparing themselves but with the act of using porn to masturbate it does become then difficult for women to achieve arousal during sexual activity or actually orgasm so it does affect us in similar ways it definitely affects men in a more severe way the way this all happens is because there's a change in our brain, which I mentioned. So it's not just the release of dopamine and that whole kind of addictive process of how you get addicted to something and why you keep going back to it and why it's hard for you to stop. You have this, what they call a super normal stimulus. So now you have this exaggerated form of what is, you know, deemed normal. It takes our desire for intimacy and connection and gives us more, a more exaggerated, quantitative, you know, super normal versions of what we desire. Now, the real thing seems less exciting than the comparison which is elevated and that's what porn will do if you know they're slipping if their numbers are not hitting they're gonna keep giving you crazier more wilder more exaggerated more bigger more this more that more 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 to the point where when when you're in a clear mind you can't even keep the browser open one second after you came because you're like shut this shit fucking off right away after you spent hours searching on it because you come to your senses and you really fucking realize that this is just kind of absurd and kind of ridiculous and kind of gross. So now with the super super normal expectations, right, or su- the super normal stimulus that we've been fed, we now expect that in our relationships. We can never find that in a relationship, so we're constantly on the hunt. This is why I, th- I believe that cheating and porn go hand in hand. People who watch a lot of porn are more inclined to cheat. 
period. They are not able to be okay with what they have. They need more. They're feeding into that part of them as a human being in other areas of their life, making them less likely to be okay with just one person now because they can have 17 when they're watching porn. Right. So now they want to see if they can replicate that in real life. And if they get attention from somebody else, they don't mind risking their relationship because I just it's just a fix. I just need this. It's not that serious. They rationalize it in their head, just like how you rationalize watching the shit that you do in your head when watching porn, because it's been so normalized for you. It's been beautifully curated for you. Beautiful actually isn't the fucking word I would use for porn, but OK. <laughs> now we have a desensitization to reward. A dysfunctional sexual response and impulsiveness. Tell me, tell me where porn is good. Show me where. Porn also fuels mental illness. Uh, this is a given, right? If you haven't already been able to read between the goddamn lines of the things I've said. There has been studies done that link to pornography consumption and mental health outcomes like depression, anxiety, loneliness, lower life satisfaction, and poor self-esteem and mental health in general. When we use it, we're usually trying to escape some sort of negative emotion, distraction, boredom. And it's never just boredom. It's the fact that you can't chill on your own or do something productive. That's it. And that's where pornography usage becomes compulsive and done more frequently. When you are at your worst, that's when you're consuming porn. And you don't even realize it. Now, quitting porn then becomes a whole nother battle because now it's going to interrupt the unhealthy cycle of escapism and mental health issues. So now you don't have a coping mechanism and now you're terrified, right? So this might give you the, the whole thing of like, I need porn even more now than ever because if I'm trying to quit, I'm starting to see things come to the surface or I'm starting to see that I'm avoiding something that's bigger than what I really thought it was and I'm not able to deal with that right now. I need an immediate distraction that's going to take my mind and full body out of this. When porn is involved, you have a problem. You can still masturbate. Use your imagination. That doesn't mean use pictures and videos sent from other people it's still porn that is still a form of porn sexting video chats um videos from other girls videos from other guys that is still porn okay that is still porn can you sit there with nothing no machine no phone no nothing and actually use your brain to masturbate the first few times if you're trying to quit from porn you know, you're gonna be racking your brain for different types of scenes that really turned you on or that you save or that you watch all the time because it's your favorite, you know? And then with time, you're going to get over that. Or you're going to challenge yourself to think outside of the box, to think more real life, to think with emotion, to think with, you know, a, your partner. But this video is not about how to quit porn that, you know, if you are struggling with that and if you do feel like you want to stop and you're having a hard time, there are so many professionals out there, both virtually and, you know, therapists and trained professionals that are actually trained to deal with this and can help you. You know, it's possible. It's been done by so many men already. And there's so many online forums to discussing the challenges, but that the benefits are worth, you know, what you're going to go through. Porn affects your self-esteem because of comparison. It's so far from reality. So when you're scrolling on Instagram and you see all these people on yachts and this and that, and you're working your ass off, if it affects your self-esteem a little bit, you know, the beauty standard just keeps getting to a more and more unattainable level. You can't be beautiful unless you've gotten your whole face essentially reconstructed to look like the same girl that's popping up on Instagram every five minutes. And it's not even the same girl. It's just girls that look like one another. And when it's in numbers, when it's continuously being shown to you, that's when you think that that is real life. When you're con continuously consuming porn for many, many years on a daily, weekly basis, this is what is considered real life and nothing else will be will suffice. You'll start to you know chase people for their physicality. You won't be interested in anything emotional. And then you'll realize one day that it's a lonely life. And when you want to get in touch with your emotions, you've stunted yourself for so many years. This is the biggest warning I give everybody. If you're not going to do the hard work now, I promise you, your future self will hate you even more. Okay, you're only making it harder for yourself in the future. To end this off, and I know it was a lot of information. There are so many other areas I could have gone into, so much detail I could have gone into. I, I tried to keep it as light as possible, although I know it wasn't super duper light, but th this conversation isn't light. This is something that we don't speak on because it's embarrassing for a lot of us because we don't want to quit because we're comfortable, you know, hiding amongst these disgusting videos. We think it's it's a loophole to cheating. That's why people don't want to give it up. They don't want us to stop normalizing it because it allows people to, to do things that are not acceptable day to day, you know, but porn makes you feel like it's accepted. Like there is a community out there that is watching the same fucked up shit that you are. And I do believe that people need a reality check. I'm not going to sit here and say I accept you for who you are. No, I don't accept you if you like rape 
rape like shit or if you have you know weird fantasies about terrible things you need to fucking fix yourself and check yourself and stop feeding those thoughts stop feeding that behavior stop feeding the impulsivity by continuing to watch porn and aiding in that habit that's what you're doing you're just allowing it to be harder for you to quit now, just to highlight something that I've said that I know you guys are going to take out of proportion, you can still masturbate. Masturbation is not porn. When I say masturbation, we always think of porn. This is how much we've normalized porn and masturbation in our society, and it's absurd. It is not okay. You don't need to blur the two lines. They are two different things. We watch porn in conjunction to masturbation. You're not going to sit and watch porn and not masturbate, right? Eventually, the point is for you to masturbate. It's content for you to masturbate, too making you a dumber person in society, mind-numbing. And I believe that it's, you know, this might be very conspiracy theorist of me, but they want you to have sexual dysfunction. They want you to have erectile dysfunction. They want this to not be good enough for you because then there's so many other money-making industries that benefit from this, the pharmaceutical being one of them, right? There's so many areas where businesses win for your fucking problems, for, you know, the, the more dumber you are, for the trends that are out there, there's another business waiting to pop in. You know, oh, you like this? Well, then you're going to love this product. So you're going to put, you're going to want to do this. Or, oh, we have a OnlyFans 2.0 for people that like elbow fetishes or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Like, this is where you are dumb and blind. You are a consumer. That's all that you are. You are not part of a community. They are not, uh, you're sold this false reality. It is just a dream, la la land that's going to make you disappointed in real life. So why don't you hate porn? Why don't you hate porn for what it's done for you, for what it's doing to you, to your relationships, to your connection with yourself, to your sex life? You shouldn't be normalizing it. It's hurting you. It's affecting you. They think that you're dumb and you're saying, yeah, I'm dumb. And you keep going back to it. It's a billion dollar industry. I'm not saying we can change that. I'm just saying that we can make our lives better. We shouldn't be focused about, you know, how society is going to be. Society's dumb. Society are a bunch of sheeps, right? We know that. They follow the herd. But if you want to do better and if you want improvement in your life you know mentally emotionally physically you know so many people have actually and I'm going to read them to you right now actually before I forget so many people have reaped so many benefits from quitting porn so I'm going to read you some of them if you want to make a healthier change in your life I recommend starting now just that's not an option anymore that's not an option anymore I'm going to read a few of the testimonials I've gotten mixed with some that I found online from different communities So somebody said here, so anonymous says, at first it was extremely hard. You will probably relapse many times before you're able to kick your habit. But if you, if you can go a few weeks to a month without it, your odds of success increase dramatically. Physically, I didn't notice many changes besides the return of some sensitivity in that area. Mentally, I feel closer to my partner and more in tune with her needs. A very real, honest answer. You're not going to feel like a new person right away, but with time, you're going to be able to reflect on the past and realize, holy fuck, I'm in such a better place than I was before. Someone said that my overall penis health has improved so much easier to get hard. Remember when the wind would give you a semi? Not quite there yet, but it's sensitive. My loads have tripled and I want to be in a relationship more than ever. Porn really helped deny this feeling. I'm very, I'm very much less perverted now. Someone also said that they feel like they have a higher libido and they're more outgoing with women because of their higher libido. They're de- they have a decrease in shame and anxiety and increased sensitivity during sex. Someone said, I'm never going back to it. I sometimes masturbate, but porn has no place in my life. Stop wasting three hours a day drinking and smoking the whole time. Lost weight, feel healthier, and have better self-esteem. Another person says, it refocused my libido so that I'm not constantly craving sex anymore. And then I really get into it once I hook up with someone. Personally, I feel generally less impulsive slash anxious in other aspects of life. It was way easier for me to just sit and relax instead of constantly checking my phone or getting fidgety, also getting boners. The added bonus of less porn and jerking off is that sex is a lot more real. I also wholeheartedly believe that jerking off lowers your drive and makes you feel like less of a man. Take some reflection to notice, to be honest. And it continues to go on and on and on. If you want a better sex life, if you want a healthier relationship, if you want to increase your libido, increase your self-esteem, increase your confidence, if you want to be able to avoid possible sexual dysfunction in the future, quit porn stop normalizing it if you don't want it in your relationship you don't need to have it in your relationship something I don't have in my relationship something that is a no-go period because of the damage it has done and will do it's inevitable thank you guys so much for being here and listening to this entire episode it was a longer one than what I normally do but I really hope that 
this was helpful. Send it to your friends, your guy friends, your girlfriends. Discuss it. Talk about it. Do your research if you want to. And maybe try and make a change. You know, for this new year, maybe that is your fucking little resolution. And honestly, it's going to bring a lot of light to other areas that may need your attention. And you will be only thankful for it. I hope you appreciated this. And I hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell for the notifications as well as follow my podcast E Roddick by Eden Middleman. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, make sure you follow it on all of the devices in your household. It really helps me out a lot and I will see you guys back here very soon. Take care. Bye.